what OpenAI did is they built uh, such a large language model from a lot of data that was collected from the web. There's Wikipedia, Google Books, and all of this is unfiltered. They just grab whatever they could get. Using this data, they built a GPT-3, 5, or now it's 4, and more recent models. But basically, they're all trained in the same way as I described. They know exactly how to represent a word in the context of a sentence. And these models are trained to predict other words with each other uh, together. The difference between a generative model like GPT and a BERT model is that BERT will predict words to the left and to the right and gets help from words to the left and to the right. A generative model can only produce the next item in a sequence. I see that you mentioned here GPT 3.5. Is it still up to date when Model 4 or for all are on the market? Yeah, we don't know exactly anymore what kind of things they are using uh, because they don't publish anymore about the, the new releases. Mm -hmm. But this is not something you can easily change. So we have now Omni, for instance, which is a multimodal system. Basically, we knew that they had single modality systems. So they had a language model, GPT-3 and 3.5 and GPT-4. They had DALI and they have some other models. You have certain techniques to fuse them into one single model, uh, basically also through attention by learning how a, a part of a picture connects to a word. So you give it uh, data where image and text are associated or Python code and text are associated or audio and text are associated. So it's not really very different. So it, underneath is a generative model. Maybe one more question in this part, because you said that this is unfiltered data and we probably have about IP and scrapping data and IP infringement. And some people say that it uses works uh, and some, some people say that it's just using data that uh, are not associated to works and authors. What do you think? Can we say that these models infringe intellectual property, uh, in fact, or right. just scrap data? I think it's a difficult discussion because, I mean, the, the model has been reading this data as we have been reading data as well, which mm -hmm. is publicly available. So anybody can access this data if you do the effort. Uh, and it converted it into something else. So okay. when I read a Wikipedia text, I just absorb the knowledge and now I understand something like, uh, I now know what the orbit is or something like that, the concept of an orbit. So am I violating copyright if I do that? I don't think so. This model itself, as I said, didn't really index the information. It turned it into a representation, which is a powerful, creates a powerful association across words, especially words in a sequence. And of course, if you have a sequence, which is very similar to something that I've seen in the pre-training, the association will be very strong. But I think it's difficult to claim that it actually is literally quoting the original text. It is kind of reproducing the original text and uh, it's doing it. it could, you could actually change the temperature. It will reproduce something slightly different or you change a little bit the, the, the preceding input and it will produce something slightly different. So I think it's a difficult case, actually. I also have seen a paper that if you give the model a long repetition of words, so you say like uh, 50 times, company, 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 company. It somehow goes into a reset mode where the previous uh, prompt is kind of uh, disappears and it starts outputting associations, which are very strong because there is no prompt, which correlate very literally with the pre-training data. So then it outputs literally things that it has seen. And it can even output personal private information, which is, of course, terrible, like uh, phone numbers and stuff like that. Because it has seen it, it has read it. And, and, and since there's no clear prompt, it cannot do nothing else than just out, outputting it. So still not sure, because technically, I mean, we are just looking at these numbers. Eh? There's nothing else than that. It's, it doesn't have effect. It can... 
So it's not so it's not really like uh, looking it up and then giving it to you directly. Now the problem is, of course, it can also produce anything, and it is strongly biased by what it has seen. So it will also have hate speech and other kind of things. And I figured out that well, there is a way to fine tune this model, so change the associations again to be sensitive to certain types of interaction that we have, like chatting or generating a poem or a story or summarizing translation Q and A. Now they, they, they learned this because they gave developers access to GPT-3 and they saw that people were training or using it in that way. And then they took all those examples and it took a lot of data to actually make the system behave in mimicking these functions. And this is what I call these intents. And I said, this goes very fast, very quickly, and it's very efficient. And that is what most common people now see if they go to ChatGPT. Any naive user can just ask their question because they kind of uh, uh, cover most kind of uses that, that, that you can imagine. And that means that suddenly this very complex technology can be operated by anybody uh, using a very intuitive interface, which is natural language, without any kind of specific knowledge. But the power of these models is a lot bigger than what the naive users can do. So there is now a whole new discipline called prompt engineering, which are people who know very specifically how you can instruct the model to produce something by being very explicit in what you tell it to do. And then there are all kinds of other functions outside of the ones that they provided that you can uh, derive from the model. Uh, and so this is what a lot of people call emerging properties that were not explicitly, it was not explicitly fine-tuned for this, but it kind of uh, apparently is somehow indirectly in there. And if you know the right way of prompting it, uh, you get that functionality.